the June second kind of council meeting to order. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Mayor Olson. Here. Alderman Dandy. Here. Alderman Mayor. Here. Alderwoman Wilhelm. Here. Alderwoman Hanneman. Here. Alderman Barber. Here. Alderman Nelson. Here. If you have a quorum, please rise and join um, Eagle Scout Bransard in the Pledge of Allegiance. No, you come on up. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. First item on the agenda is citizens' comment period. Any citizen wishing to speak on any item, please rise, come forward, give us your name and address, and tell us what you'd like to talk. Representative Stronsky, good evening. Good evening. How's everybody in this wonderful evening? That uh, it's good that the meeting's inside instead of outside. <laughs> so it's good to be here. And again, thank you. I'm here to speak in the COFAR uh, item on the agenda tonight. Uh, I'd like to speak at come up also. Uh, I do have some real questions about having that particular business in the community. I'm sure the community can do better. Uh, and I did view other sites uh, of that particular business. So uh, I will speak not in favor of uh, that particular business. Thank you, Your Honor. And Thank you very much. Anyone else? Anyone else? See no one else rise up. Since kind of period, move on to mayoral announcements. First one is a report from our emergency operations command staff for the COVID emergency, which would be Health Officer Day. Fortunately, our reports are getting shorter and shorter. Uh, good evening. Thank you for taking the time to listen to um, the updates. I'll just go. Uh, briefly over um, some updates on numbers and testing and then um, answering questions that you might have uh, over the last two weeks. Um, so currently right now, um, the amount of testing that's been occurring um, in the state has uh, risen dramatically, which is a good thing. We wanted anyone who wanted to be tested to have the opportunity to do so. Uh, so right now, the, the positivity rate for Franklin, which is the percentage of tests that were done that are positive compared to the total. Um, is 7.8%, um, which is slightly above the state average of 6.7%, but well below the county average of 14%. Um, it's important to note that that is just the rate of testing, not the infection rate uh, within the community. The infection rate would be the number of individuals who are ill um, against the total population, and there's not really a great way to measure that at this point. Um, so we kind of use what we have. It's not the best data, it's not the best science by any stretch, but we use what we have and I can tell you that that number, at least for the Franklin sign, has been moving in the right direction. Um, about three weeks ago, the positivity rate here was about 12%, so the fact that we've come down 4% uh, means that we're getting a lot more people tested. And um, I'm not an epi epidemiologist by nature, but what I've been told from those that are is that if your rate is under 10, that you're testing at a good, a good rate to get a good number for your, uh, for your community. So um, the fact that that number is trending down while the number of tests keeps going up um, is a good sign for us. Um, then on the testing side of things, um, the uh, city of Milwaukee uh, still has two testing sites. Uh, the UMO site on Chase is the site that's been there. Uh, this is its third week. Um, the north side of the city, um, that testing site has moved to Custer Stadium at Barack Obama High School, which is on Fairmount Avenue. We have the links for these testing sites um, on the city website as well as our Facebook page. Um, and then a little bit closer to home, starting uh, on Thursday on June 4th, uh, there will be a community testing site at the Cudahy Water Utility, which is 5110 South Lake Street uh, from 11 to 7 during the week and 11 to 6 on Saturday. Um, and again, this testing site is open to anyone that wishes to be tested, uh, regardless of symptoms, and you do not need an appointment. Uh, so those three testing sites are up and running for any resident wishing to be tested um, that couldn't do so through their provider. 
And then uh, finally, just wanted to uh, say a big thank you to all the businesses and clubs and youth sporting uh, organizations within the community for reaching out to us at the health department um, to get um, thoughts and suggestions on how they could um, reopen or do things safely um, with regard to safe distancing um, and, and that type of thing without just kind of reopening full bore and, and uh, putting people's safety and health at risk. So we do appreciate anybody calling us and asking for advice and tips and um, if anybody still needs to call us or they want to tweak the plan that they started out with, um, please continue to call and email us. We're glad to help. There's a couple of three that I want to call out specifically. Um, one that was ahead of the game was uh, going after. Um, they specifically wanted to get ahead of it because they were obviously open for curbside service. They wanted to get ahead of it. Um, and they wanted to be as open as quickly as possible. So they got out ahead of it quickly. Um, so I just wanted to mention that. Uh, Rock Ventures uh, met with us early in the game uh, early in the game, early within that week, and presented a plan that was very comprehensive and in their favor to help us out, they presented a very comprehensive plan for all of, all of their various operating units and asked us, permitted us to use that and share it with other communities. So, um, so let's help the rest of the area uh, with recreational facilities and unique facilities. So that's very good. And I don't know if anybody's been looking at Facebook, but uh, we knew that uh, Mimosa would slowly open because we all know that Estella, he wants to do things right. And he put his plan out on Facebook. And if you, when you go have uh, breakfast there, you're gonna have three people taking care of you, each with a very specific assignment um, and very detailed jobs to do in terms of and, and how, how they do it, very sterilization, and, uh, uh, and it's pretty interesting, but he put that on Facebook, so there's three very unique uh, uh, organizations that are doing things very well for us, so it's credit to our community. Any questions for the director? Alder Nelson. Hi, good evening, thank you. Uh, Quick question, any update on House of Correction? A few things, number one, are they open in the annex? And for those that don't know, that this has been kind of a big expansion. So I don't know if you know this or not, but if they are open, and approximately how many, I believe these were state prisoners coming in that are COVID, or maybe just a, just a little touch base. Sure, yeah, and I, I did reach out to them today. I, I, I thought that the question might come up. Um, so the, the louder building is what they're using for um, what's called an alternative care facility. So it's similar to what was uh, constructed at State Fair Park, um, but this facility would be specific to um, inmates from other uh, jails, correctional systems throughout the state if it were to be needed. Um, at this point, it is not yet open. Um, there are still some uh, issues to be worked out with the Corporation Council with um, various uh, correctional facilities that are interested in utilizing it. So the MOU hasn't been signed yet. Um, so it is not in operation. I, I don't have an ETA on that. It's with their court counsel. Um, as far as who's coming in, uh, we were able to get um, some information from uh, this, the county's emergency operations center of um, sort of how they're going to judge who is the best fit to come to this facility. And it's, it's based not only on um, the crime they committed, but also what type of uh, inmate they are. So even if um, somebody is, is incarcerated for a, a low level crime that wouldn't necessarily be considered violent, but they are um, uh, in, uh, an inmate that might um, react differently or act out. Um, so that would be somebody that would not be eligible to come here and our House of Correction does have the right of refusal for anybody um, to come. Thank you. I think you all saw the letter I sent. Some of you have distributed it publicly. Um, I did get a response to that. Uh, if anybody's interested in the response, I'll be happy to share that privately. Alderman Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Courtney, for your update. 
Um, I just want to remind everybody, and I want to thank, I want to commend, first of all, all of those that are wearing a mask. This thing is not over, despite what we see on TV with all of the crowds gathering together and persons not wearing masks and being huddled together. It's not over yet. We're going to see a spike. And I hope I'm wrong in that. And I may be proved wrong in that. But I may be proved right. So I commend those who are wearing their mask and those who are practicing six feet um, physical distancing. And I would recommend, Mayor, that we look at that a little closer and we practice what we preach. We're not above the recommendations that we're making. So we should be practicing what we're preaching and wearing our masks and staying six feet apart. You're doing a pretty good job, but I'm sure if we measure, you're not six feet. And in fact, now they're saying six feet may not be enough. And part of it too is being in the same room for a period of time. It's not just that instant contact. It's being here for a couple of hours, which we are often. So I, I think we need to practice what we preach and continue. There's a reason that the 4th of July is canceled. There's a reason the state fair is canceled. There's a reason other things happen. Um, it's not over yet, and we need to listen to the experts. Um, Courtney, anything wrong in there? Anything I said? Anything you want to add? Uh, no. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else? Uh, one item on finance. Do you want to talk about the uh, FEMA money and the, uh, the money that the governors? Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the, there's a number of pools of funds that are made, uh, made available to the city. Uh, FEMA is a Federal Emergency Management Association. The city has applied for a grant with that organization. That grant would cover 75% of the costs associated with purchase of PP&E. Um, the unbudgeted employees that we may hire to help fight the um, pandemic in our community and any overtime for budgeted persons that are involved in um, protecting the community against um, issues related to the pandemic. Recently, the governor uh, announced a grant for Wisconsin communities uh, related to uh, combating the pandemic. Uh, the city of Franklin is eligible for $585,000 associated with that, but again, those Eligible costs are unbudgeted employees in the health or public safety area. Uh, so if we hire people who were not budgeted, then those costs can be covered. The purchase of, ex of uh, unbudgeted PP&E, so we have to buy extra PP&E. But also, uh, if our health department ends up doing a greater effort than what we would normally have in contact tracing, those costs are also eligible. So from a standpoint of the eligible costs that we have from the state, most likely it's going to be FMLA or um, sick time for employees who become, who contract the disease or are needing to be away from the, their job yeah, related to that, or contact tracing. Uh, but all of those extra costs that the city might have are eligible for uh, coverage by these two grants. And this money is reimbursement, it's not, it's not up front. It is a reimbursement type situation. And Paul said on both of these ones, it's for PPE, and we have PPE. So, um, so let's all, all like I said, about $585,000. Maybe, uh, Representative Skrans, can you find out where that 570000 leftover money is going to go and who's going to get it? Because we're not going to spend it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. They, uh, the governor's office doesn't really give up much information, but I will call tomorrow. Yeah, and find out where that extra money that we're not going to be able to take advantage of. Yeah, I'll That'd talk to you tomorrow. Thank you. Give a call. Um, just, we're going to try to do some enhanced contact tracing um, and we'll see where that, that head goes. Any other questions for staff? Thank you, Courtney. Okay. Mr. Mayor, uh, can, I, can I make one, one more point? 
Um, we started the videoing because of COVID, because of the emergency measures taken. I hope that when this is over and we can see ourselves clear, we can continue the video videoing because I think it's a really important uh, addition to our meetings. Yeah, that's certain. We need to um, change our ordinance to make this a standard thing rather than an emergency thing. And, and we need to find some money to buy permanent equipment that doesn't require staff to be here. So, yes, we, we need to do some work, but yes, we can. Thank you. Uh, item B uh, is an informational item. In your packet, there was a letter from the chief, a memo from the fire chief relative to an ISO rating that we get. That's a fire insurance rating. Uh, in the past, we've been an ISO rating number four, which gives uh, insurance rates a, a rating. Mark, Paul, and Andrew can talk more about this, but. Um, it sets your insurance rates up. Um, I was shocked when I got this letter earlier in the week, late last week. Uh, our rating went up two points to the second highest you can get. Uh, the chief has been working long and hard with the rating agency to have them understand how it is that we fight fires in the city of Franklin and actually in Milwaukee County. And our rating went up two classes. And it's the second highest you can get. and and. We can't get the highest rating because that's designed for a, an individual city in a metro area, um, such as Milwaukee. So what this means is people in Alderman Nelson's area, uh, unhydrated hydrated areas are going to see a drastic reduction in their rates. Excellent. Because of this. So uh, when you see the fire chief, thank you for his hard work. This is going to mean a lot of money to uh, um, many constituents. So, head on back. With that, we move on to regular business. Uh, item C1, approval of regular common council meeting minutes, May 19th. Any additions or corrections? So moved. Say. All those in favor, say by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Uh, approval of the special common council meeting on May 28th. Any additions or corrections? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Item G1 is a project update for Ballpark Commons. Mr. Zimmerman, welcome. also a uh, parking attendant for the um, Milky Way drive-in. Um, so just, just to, I don't have anything substantial for all of these pieces. I, I put a uh, memo in your packet last time dated April 2nd that I think finally hit your package in late May. There's nothing substantial that's different. I'll, there's a couple of items, but I'll just use that as the baseline to talk. So we have a whole section on infrastructure and um, what I would say about the infrastructure um, is that it's a, it's a bit of a who's on first game right now. So uh, your uh, planning department called a, a summit. Is that, is that what you call it, a summit? So we're gonna get all the, all the people in the room to sit down and um, you know, figure out who's, who's responsible for what. As, as you may or may not know, one of our, our uh, major general contractors has since relocated, so that's, I think, a bit of a complication. Um, but we're, we're on it, there's a, there's a meeting that will be hopefully hopefully uh, put in the schedules in the next week or so. New perspective is um, at the gold mine in terms of getting open. Velo Village on track, on budget, uh, things moving very, very fast. Um, office retail, same update. We are you know, essentially 100% sold out. So we've got an engineering company on the second floor. We've got a coffee shop that's coming in that's ready to get going. It's just they're just waiting through, just waiting for the right time on that. And then Exos opened their shop, and then Wheel and Sprocket is just, they're having a monster year, which is pretty interesting. Um, I'm gonna skip the stadium. Uh, Mosh Performance Center is, uh, you know, frankly, it's moving a little too fast, which I'm the opposite of that. It's just because we've gotta get that thing open in January, so they're actually way ahead of schedule. So what you see there, as a reminder, is the, um, there's two buildings that are connected. One is the medical office building. 
Um, and then the other is the now that they're they're putting up the 76,000 square foot of uh, indoor turf, but they're moving very very quick on that. Lux Golf hit a bit of a financing snag, but we I think we solved that last week uh, by bringing an additional partner. Uh, it's a little more expensive than the beginning, but uh, in our original memo we said that it's on hold and it's now kind of back in action. Hotel, uh, we have Holiday Inn Express that's in, and they're just waiting for. The, the right time, so right now they're targeting like a September start date. Brewpox, still no attraction, just not enough time. M1, R2, we are talking to another developer about that. And then there's a whole set of um, protocols that we installed around COVID-19 um, impact today that you know is going very, very well. Construction continues to, to move very, very fast there. Um, the other thing, uh, Courtney talked about it, but the COVID-19 plan, we spent a lot of our time putting together a plan, meeting with um, the key constituents in Franklin around how we would like to open by um, certain businesses. Um, that plan has sent, since been adjusted. We we're now, I think, like day 14 into our opening, something like that, almost 14 days. Um, and it's going well. I would suggest to you that actually the biggest um, problem for us is actually getting employees to do, to do it, um, whether or not they buy into it or not buy into it. So it's very much a leadership management issue that we're, we're frankly struggling with. It's, it's, it's very responsible still, it just doesn't happen as frequently as we want, but we're, we're all over it. Um, another update is uh, where's the milkman, what's the plan there? We had a uh, owner's meeting uh, this morning, um, and uh, it looks like there's gonna be a, a, a season here, but it's, there's 12 teams, as a reminder, they're in Texas, uh, Minnesota, um, Sioux Falls, so essentially we've got now two potentially three stadiums, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up a, what we're referring to as a pod structure. We're essentially now, um, for this area, we will host um, two, maybe three teams will become their home venue until their facility is ready, then they'll, they'll spin out. Um, so it's, what we think is interesting about that is we'll still limit capacity per our COVID plan, but we think that j there's just gonna be supply and demand, so if we can do 1,200, 1,500 people, which is about a third of our capacity, you know, we think that that'll be, I mean, the market will ultimately dictate that, but, you know, they'll, they'll essentially, you know, could be a game going on every every, every night. And um, there's also really interesting national broadcast um, opportunities that are being presented to us that could, you know, from a tourism, just from, you know, Franklin being on the map. So we're really excited about that. We just got that news today. Um, I mean, the Milky Way is, uh, you know, that's the, I don't know if you want to call the elephant in the room, but obviously a lot of, Folks here spent, spent a, a significant amount of their time dealing with uh, noise complaints. We've worked very, very hard on that. Um, I think over the last four or five days, I, I, our, our complaints have significantly reduced. So there's still things that we're doing, bringing in a, 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 a sound consultant, but we you know, we think we're, he we're heading in the right direction in terms of that. We continue to do sound checks. We're not. We're not hitting our decibel meters, but that in the end really doesn't matter if complaints come in, and we recognize and understand that. Um, but just in the first, I think whatever it was, as the third uh, Sunday, we did well over 10,000 people that rolled through. Um, you would take that by 3.5, by 3.5, that's the number of cars. So that's a lot of, it's a lot of traffic that's coming in. Um, but, but well, that might sound scary, it's very responsible traffic. Well, some people do get out of the car, it's very, it's done very well, all the employees are in masks. Um, so, I, I guess what I have, uh, and then I have a, I was hoping to have a really big update for you guys, so you're gonna have to wait another meeting, but there could be a meeting tomorrow that could, could, um, could become very interesting for the city. Uh, minor league baseball has changed the way that they're doing business, and that could mean really good things for the city of Franklin. So I'll just leave that teaser with you now because there could be a, a whole nother, not like a Milky Way, let's get permits in type of teaser, Sandy, but, but <laughs> it, could be a, uh, it could be an interesting opportunity for, for the city. Um, and the other thing I also just want to address the masks just because we, we spent a lot of time kind of thinking about masks and, and I kind of felt like I, I was getting told that if I'm not wearing a mask that that's not responsible. We've done a lot of research um, on masks and, and our, what we find is when we all use them is in the end people aren't using them right. And you know, Dan just has a, I counted nine times you touched your mask. Um, so while I, while I appreciate the sentiment, um, I think you know, the data um, suggests a bit different if, if you're not using it right. So I do wanna say that because you know, I have a different point of view on it. So. 
Well, since you did call on me, I guess I do need to address that. Call him there. Thank you. Um, Mike, I tend to listen to the experts in the issue, and that's where I get my, my information. That's why I'm wearing a mask, and I'm touching it to adjust it to make sure it's in the right place. I do wash my hands after that, so the point is it stays covering where it's supposed to be covering. Um, my other question would be for the Milky Way. Um, you mentioned that, and um, I know there were complaints in the beginning, and they seem to have died down. That's good to hear. I know you're addressing that, and I like the fact that you um, address the noise complaint rather than the meter reading. So I appreciate that. Mr. Mayor, when will the when will the hearing be for the permanent licensing for the Milky Way? Uh, when the application gets filed and that was not yet. That's still on track to be soon. Yeah, it's, it's just expedited. Yeah, I mean I never yeah, it's, we're, for luxury we're doing the best we can. Mr. Mayor, one last thing. Um, you're more or less a partner with Mike on this, representing the city, really. It's, uh, you two guys are the big ones. All of us up here have our home phone number or cell phone number listed on the website or on the newsletter, um, but you do not. You have a city hall the office here. If people need to get to you at other hours, um, what should they do? How should they call you? Contact you. Well, they should call their alderman, and their alderman can get me. Okay, then he should continue forwarding everything to you. Sure. Everything, okay. He will continue doing that. Because it's important to know that I'm not a super alderman, I'm the mayor, right? The aldermen are the aldermen. Mr. Mayor, this is your project. This is your oh, project. No, this you is are the project. champion of this project, Mr. Mayor. Our project. This is, you are the champion of this project. You are the CEO of this community. Any complaints need to be need to come to you. You need to be aware of all of the complaints since you're the CEO and you're the champion of this project. This is you're a partner. You're a full project partner in this project. So don't tell me I'm supposed to do something about this because there is nothing I can do. This comes to you. You are the boss. It doesn't go any higher than you. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to just make comment. I, I actually disagree with that last part. I think the entire city, I mean, you're well documented that you don't support the project, but the, the Common Council supported it. The city, this is a city project. Um, the other thing that, that I want to remind people of is as part of our PED, we set up a, um, a uh, complaint form on our website so if people have complaints. Uh, they are also suggested to use that too, so I would, I would remind your constituents that they can use that. And, it's important to a certain extent because I know you know certain people don't want to give their name and their address, which is fine. But we need general information, right? We need to know where the sound is coming from. We need we need that so we can address the solution. So issuing a, a complaint by without any data behind it is very difficult for us. We feel like we're chasing ghosts many times. So we would, you know, we, that form doesn't get hit as much. What does happen is you guys you guys your phones. Go, but we, when we sat down, we did this a long time ago. We said, let's try to channel, let's try to channel the complaint. So I'd like to, you know, also suggest Dan that, that if you can remind people that their that form has been set up to do that. And how do they get to that form? Uh, so they just go to our website. It's actually on RockVentures.org, uh, and there's it's relatively easy to navigate. If you feel differently, I can certainly make it uh, look different and make it call out, call out, call it out more. Is there a number they can call to get? Quicker we, response. We prefer not. Um, we all prefer not. I understand. So that's a no. I mean, is it a no? Let me think about it. I just want to address one of all the mayor's concerns, and that is um, the mayor receiving complaints. Uh, not that I'm going to be clerk for another 35 years, and not that I'm going to continue monitoring my email for but during the first weekend, whenever a complaint came in online, so people go on the city's website, fill out the form, hit send, it comes to me. I'm going to say within five minutes of me getting a complaint, I forwarded it to the mayor. So he was um, and planning and the police department. So he received those complaints um, rather than wait until the next business day, which during the Within five minutes of the 
So I guess the takeaway for anyone listening is to go online, continue filling out those, those forms. We're assured by the city clerk that the mayor receives those complaints in a timely fashion. And let's be clear, it does no one any good to fill out multiple complaints from the same person with the same complaint. It doesn't do anybody any good. You hear it once, you heard it. I mean, I don't know that I need to say anything more about that. And, uh, and um, we did act on those complaints, didn't we, Mike? Yeah, we still have some work to do, but yeah. And to get six of the same complaints with the same wording from the same different people made no impact on me. Um, but let me just say it again. I'm not a super alderman. The alderman have a job in this community. Not the may, it's not a uh, common council of one. It's a common council of six plus one. So there's nothing to say that the alderman get in their car and go visit the stadium and say, hey, um, Mr. Zimmerman, we got a problem. I got complaints. It doesn't have to be the mayor. As a matter of fact, there was an alderman that did that. There was actually two aldermen that did that. I understand that. One was the council president. I appreciate him doing that. You know, so you know, I'm here to help and support. This isn't my project. This is me as the chairman doing what the common council said. And yes, I support the project. But the county council voted for this project. And it's my job to make sure it happens. So let's be clear about that. Alderman Dandrian. Hey, Mike, uh, I've noticed a significant improvement um, since that Friday when uh, myself and the mayor were out there and we were trying to remediate the issues at hand. And then I went out to the neighborhood and we were in communication trying to dial in your, your your information so we could bring it down. Uh, you know, I know you, you mentioned uh, you know decibels, but and we also talked about the sound level. And I noticed that as Tuesday came, the level came down more and more. And then on Thursday, it was even down more because then I checked on the east side and then I took my car to the far parking lot behind the mosh. I couldn't, I could hear sound, but it was muffled, so it was not distinguishable. So then I also would drive around through Hawthorne and back through that neighborhood. And as I uh, would get, get even further into the woods, yes, the canopy of the trees definitely absorbed any other uh, sound that you know, would be noticeable. But the, the sound level was too high over that Memorial weekend. Uh, and so I'd say, yes, you're definitely working. You've got to go in the right direction. Keep, keep an eye on the sound level, okay? Decibels, we approve in the PDD, but that's not something you can live off of when I can hear that movie in, in the backyards of, of uh, on Hawthorne. And as I got out of the bowl, away from the berm, it was even louder, okay? So uh, uh, that's something that, hey, you and your team go out there and see what's happening because it's, it, it was happening, it was very noticeable. Um, also, when I was out there, a little housekeeping is, I mentioned to you, the berm. Uh, in some areas, it appears to have sunk and it may not be as high as what was originally approved, okay? And also the maintenance and the cleanup and the cutting and maintaining of that berm uh, should also be taken care of out there, okay? Now I know that you work with staff because I know that you've got the, the, the collection system out there and you may have a problem with the amount of turf that you can put additional turf you might be able to do back there, but definitely work with the team so you can address that because I know that's another hot button that's going to be of interest and we, we just want to keep it attractive for the people in the backyard you know that it covers the backyard and, um, and I'm sure we'll continue to work together as, uh, as this issue keeps uh, going through the summer but I definitely want to wish you the best year as well. Thank you so
I just want to address some of those points real quick. So the, the sound system, um, I think we've got a good handle on the decibel. You know, so think of that as, I'm going to move my ski test here, so if I apologize, but think of that as the base. So we're now bringing in a guy, he's hopefully coming Monday, that's done, worked for all these theaters, Marcus, AMC, and he's had to dial down theaters that are in malls or next to shopping centers, and he, he brought up a whole new, um, the mayor knows what I'm talking about, but essentially whatever carries the conversation, that seems to be our problem. We haven't quite fixed that yet, but he says it's relatively easy, and you can automate it, so he's coming out, he's gonna work with the studio gear folks, which I would say are primarily like concert goer guys. So, that, so it's not done yet, there's still a lot of, a lot of wood to chop on that. Um, D, go ahead. One thing I want you to keep in mind, what you informed us the first time was around that this was going to be transmitted through AM and FM channels, as well as it was going to be uh, uh, an ambient sound for people when they were tra going traveling from their vehicles to either the bathroom or to the concession stand. So originally on that weekend, it was like I was attending an indoor theater in an outdoor environment. Okay, so it was it was very loud. Okay, so I'm not sure the image that you were trying to portray, but the image that we got last the two two Tuesdays ago when you informed us AM and FM transmission as well as ambient sound, it was it was yeah. uh, not there. So um, on that point, Alderman. So first up, the image that I'm trying to portray is is somebody that's focused on community-oriented projects in an entertainment dis district. And some of this taking their responsibility very serious to keep things going even in a time that's difficult. So that's the main thing that keeps me motivated. And I would, and there was no misleading, because I think that is a perception. Did you go to our concessions or our bathrooms when you were there? No. So I would say, so the, the fundamental problem is our concessions are located towards the back of the stadium and so our bathrooms, or while our intent was was that that would would, would create an ambient sound, it's just you, you can't even now if you go to our concessions or that you can't even hear anything. So I, I think it was it wasn't misleading, and I and I don't I mean when people suggest that I, I do take issue. That's why I'm talking about it. Um, I this, I think this is just practically this is a drive-in movie theater that you know we're we're doing our best to. I don't think we knew what we were really doing. But but the but the the intent was to always sort of keep within the master agreement and be, and be within the entertainment district. So I think in the end it's more about what do I how do I keep tweaking? How do I you know do I recognize that it doesn't matter if my decibel levels or whatever? It's are we continuing to try to solve the problem? Because our team has worked very very hard and has put in a lot of hours to, to do that. Um, and in terms of the to go at like we we've been in every yard. There's one guy that actually keeping out of his yard. So I've been I've been there. Just like you were, the berm. I don't know. I mean, I agree. It's it, but it's also like you guys just need to tell me what you want because our, I think our agreement is it's a normal area. And then I did look at the berms. The berm slopes down naturally in the back, and while it looks like a cave in, I think that's part of the original design. So I think we just need to sit down with planning and and just if, if even if even if it's well, that we'd like it to be mowed all the time, that's not what you know. It's not. What's in the agreement is that it's mowed every week. But if that's something we want, we can certainly, we're just not staffed up for it. So I think this is like everything that you pop this up and you just continue to work with each other as, as partners. So. Yeah, I mean, like I said, work with staff. Uh, if it's not in the agreement, I don't know. Uh, just so it doesn't have the noxious weeds growing through it. And the evergreens that we're planning out there seem to be, you know, some of them seem to be struggling. Yeah, I'm not debating with you. I just know that because we've had a lot of conversations. I just know this is on the this is getting taped, and I just want to go on the record. So that's what this is not a debate. I'm not trying to be confrontational. I'm just saying, I, I feel like I've answered the same questions over and over. So I'm glad that you asked it. And my response is, we'll continue to. It's not what our agreement calls for, but if that's what the expectation is, we'll work through that. Sure. So okay, thanks. Oh, no. Um, Mike thanks for coming tonight, and I just want to say that few times that we had to communicate after this, we were responsive, we took care of the issues. I had probably three or four different ones that I communicated with you, and I've 
got nothing since, so I think uh, you were okay. Um, Mike, was there some announcements and horn honking going on? Because that was kind of the complaints. There. Yes. Is that? Stop. We just had, we were just having fun. And with I mean I don't know how else to say other than we were just having fun out there and didn't think felt anything. Okay, that's all. I know there was um, two different things set at the council meeting. One was that you would have this ambient sound. Um, I was kinda of hoping that it wouldn't happen, that you don't need it. But when the mayor talked he said it was just going to come strictly through, you know, the radio. So the, I knew right away we were going to have a little bit of a discrepancy there because Mom wasn't hearing the, the whole story on that. So, is that ambient sound something you really feel you need to have? I mean, can, can they pick it up if they take their cell phone with them to the restroom? Or? Hey, Kristen, have you been up there? I have not. I, I would suggest everybody go up there and, you know, let's have a bad light or on, like, context. Um, I, mean, I would I say no. Otherwise, it would. Uh, pardon me. I've been up there last year. That's still. Right, but I think, but I think that's, I think that's, I think it's important to have context for whether you're an older person that's listening to complain or you're a resident. I think, it, I think context is really king here. So, do, so to your question though, I, I do. I think it's necessary. I do think it's necessary, and I think it's necessary at a couple levels. First and foremost, like we're we're we are an entertainment district. The city invested millions of dollars. I invested millions of dollars. Like there's no, that's what we are. So whether it's this uh, this this dialogue or the next dialogue, we're, we're trying to be responsible. We're trying to be respectful. We're trying to, you know, like what was not thought through was that last movie we played last Saturday night when it had um, profanities in it. Mm -hmm. Didn't even think to check it. But when you get the complaint and they list out how many f like that, we take that serious. Um, and you now it's all PG thirteen. Or we're really doing our research on like make sure that it doesn't you know get to that situation again. So do I think it's necessary? I do. Do I think the late show? We tried. We tried. Uh, we piloted something on the late show on Saturday that totally killed it. It was a vibe killer. It kind of worked, but it's not. I don't. I'm open to continue to try to tweak this thing, but um, I think it's an important piece as long as we can not have complaints. Continue. No, I, I got one after midnight. One Did you get any the last weekend? No. I think, but I think that's an important. I think trend lines here are really important. Yeah, but it is like, okay, so I can have people calling in in my cell phone at all hours of the night, but we have no other person. You know, the mayor's like, it's, oh, it's all of them's responsibility. Well, I, I don't really see it. It's like, if I've got my own issues. I've got 6,000 people in my own district I represent. So while this is a city project, you know, as partnerships because of PID money, I don't see where I have to take care of someone else's district plus my own district. I agree. Um, so, so don't do it. I mean, I don't know well, what I mean. It's either that or I shut my phone off and then my family can't go home with me when I need them. So, yeah, I, 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 again, I don't, I'm not trying to debate, but I don't know how, like, that's not, I mean, I'm not at all. I'm not well, all I guess the, what I was going to say is. There has to be maybe some type of after hours number or something that you could work on something where you know we could have something where people. I'm, I'm all, yeah, I'm all, I, I don't. I mean, I'm open to it. If that's if you guys truly believe that that's going to change the course of direction, I will do it. If it's to to, to if it's a placebo pill, I you know that's just an extra person. I have I have work for both. I mean, like. We can continue to layer on process after process, but then I have to staff that for, for what something I can address, you know. I can tell you what, I, I guarantee I'm getting paid a lot less than any of your employees are and to take your calls. So um, that you, well, you're yeah. talking about furlough and you know trying to make No, I'm I'm giving you my perspective, like you're you're giving my perspective. Like that is not my problem, with all due respect. Your pay is like this is a this you guys No, you guys, I, I, I mean it's you, insulting. Well, it, it's it's insulting. It's insulting that you say it's not your problem to have to deal with. How much you get paid is not my. Is, like I don't know what to tell you on that, Kristen. Do you want me to solve that too? No. What I want you to do is have someone who could take after our phone calls a dedicated line for complaints. 
Fine. Yeah. File a motion. You, you, there's a motion, there's a second. You, all, you guys want me to do it over there? No, I'm just asking. Could you do that? I mean, you must I, have I can someone, if you guys think it's a big deal. You must have someone on staff that can assist with that. So I think that will help animosity all the way around. Not, it'll there, help. There's no animosity on our side. Um, for the record. Well, you're kind of acting a little bit like that because I'm asking you to assist. So while you say there isn't any, you're getting a, a little bit upset. No, I'm just removing the niceness so there's clarity. Yeah. Okay. That's that's all this is. Like this is this is a, this is a business. Okay. The nice I'm running a business, and you're saying can you can you add more expense to your business? And I'm like, mm, it doesn't do take it more to. expense to have somebody have a cell phone who already has a cell that's, phone. That's parking cars and jumping cars. It, it, okay. Let's like listen. If, I, if that's what makes this issue go away, that's fine. I'm happy to do it. I mean, have your person, you know, pay by a phone call or something, or you know, or have a text. I mean, that Corey has a blasting notification. They send emails out to, and then they have to follow up and everything, and their business, and they have noise problems and complaints, and they want to do it, but. They do it because they're trying to assist, and that's, I'm just asking for assistance. It's, it's gotten better. I appreciate that. Kristen, um, there is, just again, not trying to debate you, but the reality, no, because there's a rea there's reality to you, and it's, if you want me to go to old school phones, and there are conversations that come in over Facebook Messenger on our Facebook pages that we do deal with. Are they, are we doing it right there? But we, we there's, I think there's different infrastructure, so while I appreciate the sentiment of the, of the recommendation, I would just say let's. If that's a real need, I will it's do it. It's no more old school than the one they're calling me at midnight on my own phone. The answer to this problem is to fix the problem. The problem has gone pretty much away from what over the last two weeks. I think we can move on. Alderman Mayor. Um, pretty much away isn't away. Um, to Alderwoman Williams point here, Mary you said it a few minutes ago. This is a council project. And up until recently, the council has been kind of immune to the complaints. We all take credit for it. Many of us take credit for it. But few of us want to take the complaints involved with it. So up until recently, not every council person has been aware of the complaints, possibly. It is a council project, as you said a few minutes ago. We all need to be aware of it. Actually, I think the idea that Alderman, Alderwoman Wilhelm came up with was an after hours number would be a great thing because that's what I was going for with the mayor as well. They need somewhere to call when there's a complaint. They need some kind of. Well, we, this is, we'll do it. We'll just set up a hotline that people can call. Just one more point, Mr. Mayor. Um, not that he should have to do anything extra than it was in the agreement. Let's just have, if we could have planning, check out the plan and make sure the um, berm is where it's supposed to be. Okay. Any other questions? chairperson for three years since the commission started. Uh, with me tonight is Sean Marepka. Uh, he's my vice chair also since the commission started and we're going to give you a brief update on some of the things that we have been working on. So you should have in front of you a packet of uh, our PowerPoint presentation that we're just going to briefly run through. Um, the first thing that, oh I'm sorry. We've got, got a brain source project. Is there a PowerPoint going up? I didn't know how to get it here, so I made copies. And if somebody wants to put one on the table, I can use a camera. Sure. Let's put it on the table, and then I need your <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> or another copy. Thank you. Is it on the PC? Uh, I don't have my PC with me. I, yeah. Oh, we don't have it. No, I, I, yeah, we, we exchanged 
confusion via email today. I thought it was going to be up. I didn't realize it wasn't going to be up. So you have it in, on paper in front of you. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing that we're going to talk about is the uh, uh, web. When, Glenn, Glenn, you have to leave it in one spot. That's, yeah, here. Oh, yeah, here. Sorry. Right here. website. So this is not the city's website. This is the Tourism Commission's website. This is a project that we've been working on for close to a year, I would say, at this point. Um, and we are almost ready to launch. The um, domain name is going to be CelebrateFranklin.com. And this is a uh, screen grab of what the homepage is going to look like. Where we are at in the process is this had to go before the Technology Commission. We had to do all sorts of different stuff um, behind the scenes. And now we are just trying to figure out how it is going to be hosted. Uh, and then we'll be able to push go on the, um, on the website. So that is uh, what it looks like. I can't remember. I believe I sent you all an email with a preview of it to look at. But if I haven't, I can send you that test site um, so that you can kind of play around in the previews. Um, but it's going to have stuff on it like things to do, food and drink, you know, entertainment. All of our uh, Franklin businesses are listed there, anything that is related to any of those things. So all of our restaurants are listed, um, things like that. Uh, all of our parks are there. There's all sorts of um, really great stuff designed to get people excited about visiting the city of Franklin. Um, so that is the upsa update on the website. Um, Additional activities that we are working on. Just turn this. There we go. So additional activities that we are working on. Um, we have joined Destination Wisconsin, which is previously the Wisconsin Association of Convention and Visitors Bureaus. Uh, this is basically a place, it's a portal for people to access um, Wisconsin's kind of top uh, tourism destinations. So we have sent a number of visitor's guide packets out in response to requests coming from their website, and we're gonna continue to use their resources and networking to brand Franklin. We are also partnering with the Oak Creek Tourism Commission and the South Suburban Chamber of Commerce for marketing on the DNC. On a personal note, for it, uh, in a networking group that I am part of separately, I attended a um, talk last week about um, the future of gathering and tourism and the DNC. And there was a lot of talk um, about that meeting on, on how there is going to still be a DNC and they're gonna um, continue to make decisions on how, on how to handle that kind of stuff. So we're operating under the same assumption until we hear otherwise. And so we're gonna be working with Oak Creek and South Suburban Chamber um, to try to do some marketing for that as well. Um, and then the last, thing under additional activities that I wanted to mention and you'll see some pictures of here is that uh, we are embarking on doing a series of placemaking and wayfinding signs. Uh, when the commission first started, one of the very first things that we did was a bunch of market research and we talked about, just go, we talked about um, how um, the, the, the findings out of the market research were that people didn't know where Franklin was and they didn't know what we did here. Um, and so the placemaking and wayfinding is one of the ways that we want to uh, have people recognize when they're in the city of Franklin. Um, and so we're going to be doing a number of city entrance signs and banners. So we're gonna be doing seven city entrance signs, and those are largely going to replace some of the wooden city entrance signs that you see at various points across the city. Um, we're also going to be doing over, a, we're going to be doing 100 intersection and light banners. So these are going to be kind of the like flag banners that will hang at various intersections from light poles and, and, and such. And then if you flip the page, we are also going to be doing a very large digital um, sign in front of City Hall. So it's going to look something like what you have in front of you. And it's going to... Um, it's going to be digitized so that you can advertise things like, you know, next year's civic celebration and, and all of that um, type of stuff. Sorry. We, <laughs> it was the first thing that popped in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I should also note that we work with Glenn, um, the engineer, to yes. make sure that um, we have everything lined up. There are some concerns with 
using the light poles um, to, thank you, for the banners um, to make sure that we're using the right ones. Um, and uh, we're working through that. And then we also are now publicly bidding out the project to secure of who is going to produce um, the City Hall sign and Pan the City Entrance signs. Um, yeah, so that's all I have. I'm going to turn it over to Sean to talk about our next bit, which is going to be the bulk of this presentation. So. Wait, before you do that. Yes, go ahead. So when is the bid going out for the signage and banners? They're out, I believe. Are they not? Not yet. Looking to send the advertisements to the paper tomorrow. With the closing date? When do we expect this? Nice. I believe we've calculated first meeting in July, you can award the bids. You award the bids? It's been a while since I looked at this in the midst of all the ongoings. But I dare say that we discussed that in detail, especially regarding what had to be bid and not bid. And I believe I recall the thought that there would be some common council participation as the signage would go on city owned property. Yes, and I believe. I believe that was already discussed amongst that was, you. Yeah. That was, that was that's, we've, we've passed that hurdle, have we not? Yeah, that was. Yeah. <laughs> la, la, two, two meetings ago? I don't know, you said that it didn't. It was a while ago. It was a while ago. Was, I mean, we, we, we began talking about this about six months ago. Um, I think we had the proposals back in the artwork back in February. Uh, no, wait. Yeah, around February. Hold mm -hmm. on. Well, do you have a location for the banners and the signs and the entranceways? Because I'm kind of curious where it's going to start. Sure. Yes, we do. What we do, we uh, did not include it in this presentation, but uh, I personally drove around with Callie and we looked at all different areas of where we might want to put we want to stick these. We are certainly happy to share that map with you. We just didn't have a very pretty map. It's all. Well, wouldn't this pencil. be something that would be great to coordinate with the other person who know the districts and would there, you know? Sure. Absolutely. Yes. Sure. We're, we would be ha we would be happy to coordinate it with you. But it kind of sounds like that you already got them. You have the location. And we, we don't have them. We don't. Ha we, they're not ordered. We're not, they're not ordered. They're not we're even ordered, ordered yet. Yeah. So we would be happy to coordinate that with you if that's okay. necessary. Because um, it seems that everybody thinks that Brooklyn starts at Ross and Avenue on the in third district and starts at College. Sure. We will make sure that it starts where it starts. Um, and then the other thing is, I'm a little surprised that our city staff is doing bids for a non-elected body because I have a road that's been needed to go up bid since January and nothing has happened on it yet. Um, the Ross and Combs second lift needs to go on and that bid is in La La Land right now and now you're taking direction from citizen great job no problem but this council has actions that it needs to get done that are sitting there i have hundreds of residents waiting for a road and getting the paper to go up the bid right now and somehow staff just got taken over to do a separate project but i had no clue that would be what i so we can 100 percent move quicker if we don't go through the process. Yeah, totally. I mean, we would love to get these things going. I mean, we would love to do it outside. One hundred percent. As as the city council who's voted in by people to represent six thousand people apiece, we have duties and obligations, and we need to be. I'm not sure what you're it. asking. Um, it's not you. I'm yeah. Okay. I, you're, well, you're looking. I also just want to address we're, something. We're, we're, wait, wait, wait. Wait, we're getting a little afoul of the agenda. Please carry on. Sorry. I, I believe I, I have the floor. And I'll you're just, you're I'll just... afoul of the agenda. Please um, go ahead, Sean. Unless it's Jermaine to the top. Okay. Um, then we'll take that up in another item. But I just, it, it should be, I'd like to have the council included more. It looks like we've made a lot of really great progress. Um, it's just that. And I'd like to address that directly. Okay. You guys are emailed every single time we have a meeting. You receive all of our agendas. You receive all of our minutes. 
And I personally have emailed the alderman myself to give updates on what we're doing. So I, we're here to present to you. I, I understand that there's you know a lot of stuff that goes on behind the scenes that I don't know about, but you need to take that up with each other because I can't decide for you who's going to do the bids. All we did was ask if we needed to have it bid out. That, that's all we asked. Yeah, and I, and I appreciate that, and I didn't see your emails coming in. So I, I, this like. Um, I, I, I guess what I'm just saying is because you don't know the process and you don't know what we have on our plates, right? And you you don't know that reaching out to the staff can kind of interfere sometimes. I try to let you know that that's. Thank you, and thank you for letting us know that. But we have yeah. asked for guidance all the way along, so I'm really not sure like what else we were supposed to do. We we have asked for guidance on how to get this done or not done all the way along. Same so, here. Mr. So as Amy stated, uh, we launched, we're getting ready to launch this great site. Um, we're moving forward with uh, city hall sign and uh, city entrance signs and intersection banners. But one of the um, other initiatives that we also talk about is, you know, we flirted around with a lot of ideas when we were, when we had the site to how we want to do this. Do we want to have billboards? Nah, that's boring. Um, do we want to have Instagram uh, media? How do we want to push this? We wanted to give back to the community in ways that came through our research that we learned while conducting the logo. Um, that's why we're doing the city hall and the entrance sign. But one of the other things that we're looking to do is join a partnership with um, Rock Ventures to have a future home of a visitor center for the city of Franklin. Um, we feel that this uh, center will provide our visitors with location, with information on areas attracting lodging, maps, other items relevant to tourism. Um, it'll be supported by a full-time employee dedicated to the Franklin Tourism uh, Commission. In addition to that, um, Has left. in addition to the visitor center, we are also going to get um, potential branding change of Ballpark Commons. Um, that this conversation has been to potentially change it to Franklin Home, Franklin Yards, or even potentially keep it uh, ballpark commons. With that um, partnership, we would also um, have the Milkman Stadium um, reflected to the community by changing it to Franklin Park and have sign in um, that's coming off of, mm -hmm. off of Loomis Road and by the ticket entrance and then also turf. This partnership will give us a shared voice um, in special events, marketing, economic development, and then community focus. Um, with marketing, I mean, they do radio ads. Um, it'll be on social media ads. Franklin's name will be plastered on their website. Um, TV articles, direct mail. Um, Mike gave us a great shout out with uh, Milky Way when it was launched. Um, we'll also have um, a shared voice with some events they have, um, Milkman Games, uh, the Hills Have Eyes, summer concert series, food truck uh, rallies, and uh, Rock League Baseball. On top of that, they also partner with us with the 4th of July celebration and the St. Martin's Fair for special events. Economic development, they have a lot going on there. We, our name would be part of that as well. Um, community focus, um, I'll get more into that, but um, currently they do 4th of July at the Umbrella Bar. They have the Rock Foundation, community managers, and employment volunteers. So the partnership, um, it's an investment of $150,000 to, uh, from the commission. Um, that's an all-in for our commission. And it's a 10-year agreement um, with, I believe there's language in there. Uh, we're still working through some of the language, but the language in there also is now putting us a uh, little COVID language in there. And then also has a out of clause, just in case anything tends to change. Yeah. Um, they've been great to work with in terms of brainstorming uh, partnership activities. Some of the things that we've talked about is opening day festivities, Franklin resident ticket blocks, um, having a 
fire department versus um, police department softball game. Host, uh, try to host some Franklin High School baseball games and softball games. Um, do a Franklin Park wine walk um, to embrace other businesses in the community. Um, we talked about tailgate weekends, expanding on that a little bit. Um, you know, uh, Franklin Moon Nights, even having a kite festival. Some business connections to ways so that we can partner with other businesses in the community. Start maybe a Franklin Bar Network with the Milkmen. Um, start a restaurant of the game to try to give back to the community. And then community connections. Um, doing some sort of Milkman Civic Celebration fireworks, maybe, you know, call it that. Or Franklin Library Milkman Reading Challenge. Do something with the library. Or even sponsor an athlete um, with the high school. So that's about it. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, so I'm Kelly Berg. I'm the Economic Development Director for the City of Franklin, and I'm also working to help administer some of the things that the Tourism Commission is working on, including this partnership. And uh, one of the questions that we had, of course, was in light of the pandemic and the known reduction in room tax revenues as a result, and knowing that that is the primary and currently only source of income for the Tourism Commission, what does a contract such as this look like from a financial perspective, not only this year, but over the next couple of years as well? So I put together a rough spreadsheet that I would like to walk you through quickly. The information at the top is the revenues based on the retained earnings that the commission has had since its creation, less the expenditures that took place to the branding and the website, which were both expenses that were incurred last year. So we started with 469,951, and that goes across the first three columns there, original, and then there's a column with what happens if over the course of all of 2020, we see a 25% reduction in total room tax revenue. For those of you who uh, may be listening or watching or in the room who are not aware, room tax is the only source of revenue for the Tourism Commission. There are no city taxes, no property taxes. Nothing is being taken away from any other initiatives in the city for the work of the Tourism Commission. But because it is our only source of revenue, it's very concerning to see the reduction in these revenues as they come in. So at 25%, Working with the finance director on the budget in August of last year, we assumed that we would receive approximately 210,000 in total room revenues. This is, of course, after the city takes the portion of the room taxes that are allocated to municipalities before they go to tourism commissions. This is state law. So this year, the city will receive approximately $175,000 and that happens before the, the Tourism Commission receives any funding whatsoever. Once that threshold has been reached, the Tourism Commission will receive funding each quarter as the room taxes are paid in, and at the end of the year, if the 175,000 received this year is less than 30% of the total room taxes received by the city, then there is an adjustment made to ensure that the city receives either their portion or 30% of the total, whichever is greater. So we assumed that we would receive, the Tourism Commission would receive approximately $210,000 this year. The revenues generated from the room tax has gone up each year, and as new hotels come online, we anticipate that that will continue to increase each year. Of course, the pandemic makes everything an exception this year. So in that middle column, with a reduction of 25%, that would take that revenue down to approximately 158,000. In the third column, if we see a 50% reduction, that would take it down to approximately 105,000. And that would give us total revenue in those three columns of, of three different figures. The expenses that have been budgeted in 2020 are for advertising, staffing, office supplies, et cetera, that come to a total of 439,000. That's a static number. And assuming that if we enter into this partnership with Rock Ventures, 
most if not all of those expenses will be rolled in and part of that partnership. So doing what we assume the expenses would be in 2021 in the middle column, and again in 2022 in that third column, and subtracting that out at the 25% reduction scenario and the 50% reduction scenario takes you all the way down to the bottom under 2020. And that would be the end of year cash balance for no reduction, 25% reduction, and 50% reduction. So if we're assuming 50% reduction in 2020, we anticipate that there will still be $136,000 left in the Tourism Commission's funds at the end of this year after expenses. Any questions about that so far? I think the mayor has a question. Yes, that's why I'm stopping. <laughs> $627,585 plus $195,000 brings you to $432,585. Um, th so th those, those, th those three sections are not related to one another. The top section gives you revenue at three different scenarios. All three of those scenarios are applied to the first expense column for 2020. Um, actually, you know what? Can you put it on the camera and then I will point. That might make it a little bit easier. Yeah, you can't really get it. Okay. Uh, 469,000, 470,000. That essentially is your retained earnings, right? Uh, and you expect that you're going to have revenue of 20 in 2020 of another 160,000, right? I would guess that it's probably going to be closer to the 105,000 and the 50% of what. Uh, I don't care about that. The number you have on the page is 157,000. That's at a reduction of 25%, though. We're saying. I, I don't care. That's the number you have on the page. Okay. Right? Yes. So 469 plus, 100 and, uh, plus 157 brings you to 627, right? Correct. Okay. So then you take your expenses in 2021 of. Another 195, right? No, no. The all of the numbers are so you, you, using that example of the 627. It's math. It's be simple, right? It is, but it's hard to explain. Uh, the 627 in the middle column with the 25% reduction is. Yeah. Then you subtract the total expenses of 439, and you get that year-end cash position minus 25% reduction of 188. 585. If you take the third column with the 575,000 and you subtract the 439,000, you end up with 136,000. Not that I want to complicate things, but your 210,000 well, that you're projecting for 2020, the actual 2019 was 175,000. That's correct. So the forecast for the Tourism Commission has increased every year as the actual performance of the room revenues has increased every year. So the bottom numbers under 2020 are the three different scenarios at no reduction, 25% reduction, and 50% reduction. So if we're gonna go with the 50% reduction, we, we assume that there will be $136,000 left over after all of our expenses in 2020. The middle column is assuming the 2021 expenses of 195,000 and is applying that same no reduction, 25% reduction, and 50% reduction, but assuming that the 210,000 that we use for forecasting this year is a static figure for the next two years, which it won't be, but we're making that assumption, which is a conservative approach. If, the, if we have another 50% reduction next year, we would have a balance of 46,000 left. And then carrying over into 2022, if we have a third year of 50% reduction, that's where we would end up with that, that figure in the red. Clearly, the model can't sustain at 50% reductions for three years running. There's no way that will happen, 
thought there was no way to otherwise forecast a best case and a worst case scenario. And, I, and I'm sorry this is confusing. It's, it's. We went back and forth about. Yeah, it, so, it, it, there's just no really good way to, to try to. We believe that there will be likely a 50% reduction this year, a 25% reduction in 2021, and, and little or no impact in 2022. So given those scenarios, we'll probably end up, after a partnership with Rock Ventures and other expenses, we would still end up with sufficient capital or sufficient retained earnings or sufficient cash position with the Tourism Commission at the end of 2022 to continue to sustain that partnership. So the point I was trying to make tonight was that there has been a lot of thought that's gone into what happens if the pandemic is extended. Does the Tourism Commission have the ability to continue to sustain this? And that was what we were trying to demonstrate tonight. So um, if I could make this simplified for you in any way, I'm happy to do that. On the data. Kelly, uh, did you use the number of rooms? Are, is that number static? Or did you, with the news from The Rock that there's going to be another hotel opening up, did you, we did, did you project yeah, we did not room numbers? We did not. I wanted to be as conservative as possible, so I used 210 as a static number over the next couple of years, and then I assumed a 25 or 50 percent reduction over the next couple of years, right. yeah. along with the expenses that would include the partnership with Rock Ventures, and and clearly there is many many different scenarios. The best case would be that we would end up with $271,000 at the end of 2022, and the worst case scenario would be negative 43,000 if we have three years of 50% reduction and no new rooms coming online. Well, then Mr. Zimmerman won't only be the parking attendant, he'll be also the collector. <laughs> this is true, yes, okay. yes. Okay. And, and, and they are aware of it, that the pandemic is, yeah, has we've, thrown we've our, our ability to really effectively long-term plan into a little bit of disarray. And, and we've had conversations about, we're gonna have to look at this every single year and make sure it still makes sense, mm -hmm. to make sure that it's still meeting the goals of tourism for the Tourism Commission, right. and make sure that it is a financially viable thing for the Tourism Commission to buy each year. Well, you informed us that this is a ten-year a ten-year contract. So, how but can you review it every year? It would happen because we are looking at language in order to. There's language to do that. going into it. It's very fluid. What we started with a few months ago in early March is is very it's different. It's very different than, different than, than what we're than looking right at now. today. Yeah. We're yep. gonna, most deals that are being done are going to be put through with a COVID line. Mm -hmm. This is there's going to be some sort of COVID agreement to this. We we did address. I should state that one of our commission members is with the hotels and um, they're seeing a, a higher capacity rate, of course, from April versus May. And he sees that uh, projecting up as the months go on. So I, we were a little concerned when we first started resuming our meetings that what what is the capacity of hotels and mm -hmm. where are we at long term? And the spike that we saw from April to May was, I mean, I think it was 9% in April. Mm -hmm. Do I think, you can quote me on this, but 25% in May. Yep. So we're getting tourism, we're getting people staying at our hotel, so hopefully that trend continues. However, the concern was that we talked to Rock Ventures about was, what if COVID comes back? What if, mm -hmm. what if it doesn't go away? What if it gets worse again? So that's why there has to be some sort of COVID language that goes into this deal. One thing we haven't talked about formally, we talked about it informally, is reimbursement to the city for Cali's time over the last three years. Cali and Aaron's time over the last three years. Oh, which I knew that was coming from you. Um, because it's been serious dollars and serious amount of time. Um, we haven't talked about that, but somehow that needs to figure in here. Because the taxpayers have been donating the money, and now we're going to instead of giving it to the taxpayers, we're going to give it to a third party entity. It doesn't seem quite fair to do that. So at some point, we've got to work those numbers in here, and they have to figure in as well. All right, let's figure it out. Hmm? Right. Yes. Let's yep. figure it out. Yep. Me. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Call it on the 
can we back up to the partnership portion of this? Sure. So on page four, you show this potential branding change to the ballpark. So explain what you mean by that. So currently, um, it's Ballpark Commons, Franklin, Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. We really wanted to, we, we, we brought up the conversations of whenever um, Rock Ventures brands, um, the Umbrella Bar you know, brands, Ski Hill uh, brands, whatever they're branding over on the property, we wanted to make sure that somehow Franklin's name is tied to that. Um, with, with the naming rights to the stadium, that limits us to just the Milkman games. If we go to try to figure out some sort of named potential branding change with taking away Ballpark Commons or adding to it and coming up with a Franklin Home concept or a Franklin Yards concept, that gives us exposure whenever anything is branded or marketed on, on the property. And we wanted to make sure that we secured those assets what, um, for the future for our community. Okay, well, we have probably, I couldn't even imagine how many documents we have, legal documents that all say Ballpark Commons and, um, you know, TID agreements and um, things like that. So I don't know how that plays into that, but, um, you know, we start off the meeting tonight as this is a city project, this is, you know, city, and um, we worked hard to get the word Franklin into this. We always thought that we've given the project. And that's why I said, I mean, it doesn't have to change. If we don't want it to change, it mean, that's fine. We just thought we'd like to give our branding and our community more okay. exposure. And there was some comments before that didn't. Well, okay, do you want to go ahead? No, I'm just answering your comment. I didn't, I wasn't finished, so. Um, okay. We, so I guess, you know, I don't have a huge objection to that, but I think we need to understand what that could all mean for legal documents and costs and changes. I have no idea what all the name is tied to and what we have for a city. Um, the other thing is, if we're going to make a, a change like that for something that's kind of three years as we're known as that, I think we need to have a little more conversation maybe with the council on if that's what the council wants to see for a change for the city as a city project. And so, I'm, what are what are you getting for the hundred and fifty thousand a year? The main purpose of the partnership was to put a visitor center on the property, and in addition to, we are getting the naming rights to the stadium, and the partnership of in the ballpark commons. And full time employee. And, and a full time and employee. A full time employee. And the leverage from all of the marketing and promotion that they're already able to do and bringing in additional and bringing in additional tourism businesses that are here in Franklin. For example, the idea of a kite festival would be to showcase gift to wings. The idea of the restaurant events would be to showcase different restaurants in the community. All of the work is to try to increase heads and beds and the Tourism Commission was unanimous in believing that this would be a good strategy for us to achieve that goal. Um, great goals. Um, what I hear from my constituents are, hasn't Franklin itself given the stadium and the project enough money to probably deserve the main rights? I mean, uh, $150,000 a year, we've, we've dropped that, um, you know, in, in a very short period of time on like one engineering project or something. So I, I don't know how the rest of the council feels about the naming issue, but um, I would think that we all kind of feel we invest a lot of time and money in, into the project, so, um, and, to, and to make that change without having a little more discussion. The other thing is $150,000 a year, basically for one location and a lot of businesses, I mean, they are mentioned the point after, um, you know, and uh, some of the other businesses, is it going to limit some of those other 
businesses, or, or, or we just sort of focus just on one aspect. This is a great resource for the city. I, I've supported this project. Um, but we have a lot of other businesses, and I'm wondering if $150,000 a year couldn't be spent better helping out promoting Mimosa and promoting you know, from after and St. Martin's Inn and St. Martin's Fair. That it's it's a fair amount of money to put get a can have a room here, all these rooms practically open all the time, or a room in City Hall is free. Um, and there would be more money to go around. I don't know if you've thought about any of those concepts or if this you know it's just um, yeah. So one of the things that we really liked about the idea of having the visitor center be at the rock is if you've been in visitor centers, like when you enter into the state of Wisconsin, for example, there's all kinds of brochures and information about events that are taking place, maps, all of that kind of information. So in that very static way, we would be promoting Mimosa, Point After, and, and all of the other, the Polar Center, the Conservancy for Healing and Heritage, Kayla's Playground, the list goes on and on and on. And we do have a comprehensive list, and I think it's like 120 different places or businesses in the city that would be of interest to tourists. What we're looking for is amplification. And to have a visitor center at City Hall isn't a bad idea, but the hours aren't necessarily conducive to when tourists are going to be looking for that information, which is something that we can get uh, going over to Rock Ventures. And uh, if we were to do a visitor center through a private transaction and pay rent, I think that that would probably eat up quite a bit of the 150000 uh, We have not done a market study on that, but uh, for getting a, a full-time person, a visitor center, and a space, um, it seemed to the commission like that was a pretty good deal. Well, when you bring up the fact that you're going to have a lot of different groceries for different places, and you have a lot of people coming in and out, it makes sense as long as this visitor center is accessible to you know all the people 100%. that are coming over there. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what what kind of facility or office or where are you planning to be located. That's all still being discussed. We're at the we're at the we've been the commission has been very having very um, in depth. In, discussions amongst ourselves about how we want to approach this and now we are continuing to have those in-depth discussions with Rock Ventures. So there's a couple of different places that we could do it. We're, we're definitely um, having those discussions. Um, you know, we really just, you know, like you said, this is, so, this, that, that area is really something special to our city and, and our job as the Tourism Commission is to get people to come to our city and, um, you know, we really think that partnering with them can help us do that, and we also really think that partnering with them can help us not have to piecemeal out all the different things that we want to do. So one of the things that the commission has really talked about is how doing something like this is, um, you know, yeah, it's a little bit like, whoa, you know, what are we doing? But it's also a big splash that gets us kind of five years down the road instead of having to piecemeal kind of build this stuff as we go. So, you know, um, we're going to be able to do like our marketing through them and we're going to be able to, you know, there's a lot of things that we're going to be able to get out of this partnership um, to, to advance tourism in this city. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll tell you, it's been, I got to be honest, it's been kind of an uphill battle. I remember my very first city council meeting ever, an alderman said, there's no tourism here. So... You know, to, to, to go from there's no tourism here to wanting to take us where we can get five years down the road um, in a short period of time and get us up to snuff with some of our area kind of competitors for people to come visit us is really important to this commission and that's our full focus, is getting people to come here and stay here. Is there some partnership with the Chamber of Commerce? Yes, we've been working with them as well and we will continue to do that. Do they, do they have their own office now? Uh, they have an office out of Oak Creek. Um, so they, they, they work out of Oak Creek, and so we will continue to um, be working with them. They, she attends every single one of our meetings, and they're, they're very, they're very... Are they interested in the Franklin branch? They may be. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. They may, they, they may be. That will be something we would broach, for sure. Yeah. 
So I, I, I do have concerns about just all the staff time and money that's in mm -hmm. there, and, and then the drop in the revenue and committing to, um, you know, this, what you have for the investment for your $150,000 a year in your annual budget, mm -hmm. and what happens when you can't make that? Well, that's why we're still having these discussions, and that's why we haven't signed on any dotted lines. That's why we want to make sure that there's language in the contract that will protect the commission in the city so that if something happens and we cannot make budget, we'll be able to figure out a way to continue the partnership or continue to work around how that, how that would end up. So we haven't signed anything. There isn't any like sort of dotted line action happening yet or anything like that. We're having all those conversations because we too share those concerns. That was, you know, my, my, one of my first things when we started meeting again was we need to have a very serious discussion about what we decided to start looking at, and and we need to we need to relook at it again. So um, the other thing with your Franklin Park name, we already have two Franklin Parks. So maybe it won't be Franklin yeah. Park. <laughs> maybe it'll be Franklin, Franklin Field. Field. <laughs> Franklin Common. <laughs> well, I think I would like to see more discussions around all of that. And sure. Joint meeting with. Sure. Um, so on, th on that note, I did want to mention that we are meeting weekly at this point. Um, we have a meeting tomorrow morning at 7.30. It's a Zoom. Yeah, I know it's just don't work. And I, I, I understand that. Uh, <laughs> the reason why we sometimes meet at 7.30 in the morning is because the commission is made up of citizens and volunteers, and we all have families and full-time jobs as well, and so sometimes that is the best time of day for our commission to get together. So I totally understand that, and we will try to keep that in mind and maybe stagger some of the times when our meetings are going to be. Um, or if you could record them. Sure, absolutely. They are recorded, so we do. We you just, yeah, we do have access to that. So we do record every single one. Uh, we also have a citizen comment period at every single one. So I know that um, you know if there's citizens that have feedback and want to come and talk to us about this, uh, we would love to hear it, and we would love to have you know the aldermen and and citizens and whoever um, please attend those meetings with us. So, uh, Chair Schmetzler. Um, Rock Ventures is still here. If you would like them to address, um, yeah. no. Okay. I'll remain uh, there, but first, I uh, just want to remind that that the Tourism Commission is by statute an independent commission. By statute. Yes. Can you explain by that in layman's statute, terms for anybody listening at home? <laughs> I will say it louder. By statute, they are an independent commission, which means you. Your operation is governed by the state statute, not by city order. Correct. Mm -hmm. Here, just for, I'm sorry to interrupt. I was just going to add context to the, I think there's some missing some pieces of the story that I thought, I thought might be of interest to you guys. Sure. Let's go to the mayor first. I'll go to the mayor. Well, just to, thank you for that last Turn statement. Thank you. So. I like your value of that. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Okay, it must be dead. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Okay, I think the battery did go good. Um, just for clarification, thank you for that last comment, Mr. Mayor, because that was going to be one of, my, one of my questions, and just for clarification on that. So it's $150,000 for naming rights for a 10-year commitment. Is that correct? Amongst other things, yes. Okay. Um, and then my other question is, what oversight does the council have, which kind of went to, Ms., to Mr. Mayor's uh, comment there? Does the council have oversight in any of this, and will we be involved with this? I mean, we want you involved, 100%. Um, you know, we, we But as far as approving budgets and yeah. approving projects? Uh, I would have to defer to the city attorney on that. Yes, Mr. City Attorney. As the mayor stated earlier, Tourism Commission is an independent commission. It makes its own decisions with regard to the funds it receives to statute as well as the municipal code. Um, the limited time I had to review and I think the, uh, the naming rights contract uh, came on the list maybe in late March. city name, city property, 
for the signage, et cetera. Yes, the Common Council mm -hmm. has a say so because the governing body um, is responsible for that. Um, yeah. But the bottom line overall is that the Tourism Commission, pursuant to statute um, and the municipal code, discussion here is with regard to the purpose for its existence, which is to promote Correct. tourism and tourism development in the city of Franklin. Thank you. Yes. Now, having said that, Amy made the comment. I stole the floor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just reinforcing what you were. Well, okay, go ahead. If you're reinforcing. Amy just said she wants to work with us. We so absolutely would want you to be involved, 100%. Okay, um, first off, I should have started with this. Thank you for this update. I appreciate it. I asked Kelly, and Kelly was going to do it anyway. Um, but I think this is long, long needed. I would maybe suggest that we do this a little more regularly, um, especially as things move forward. Bottom line is you control your budget, from what I'm hearing from the city attorney. We don't. But if we could get involved with the discussion, I think that would be appreciated at this level. Absolutely. We would love to have you be involved. And just to uh, go back to your comment quickly about doing this more often, we would have liked to. I was actually scheduled to right when COVID broke out. Yeah, so I'm sorry, sorry that it's been a while since I've been here. But that's why. <laughs> but yes, we have plans to continue to update you in person here at this meeting at least quarterly. And then you'll, you guys will continue to hear from me regularly via email um, as, as much as I can. And then again, if you want to be involved in the discussions, we are more than happy to have you at our meetings. Like, I would be thrilled to have you. And, and this budget that we have in front of us, is that your operating budget for the year? Is that how well can you adjust that? Um, where, where does that go from here? We look at that once a year. Uh, correct, Kelly? Once, once a year. Um, and we usually look at the budget and look at what our expenses <coughs> are going to be and adopt that. Uh, same time frame usually as the city budget. We're looking at it all at the same time. How do you pay your bills? Paul. <laughs> okay. we, we work with the city yeah. finance. We department. work with the city finance department to pull down what we sure. need. Mr. Mayor, would that be another area we need to maybe take a look at in terms of? You want me to reach in their pocket some more? Yeah. Sure. <laughs> I want you to be fair to our taxpayers. Absolutely. So, well, and just, just, or, just on that note, or just a reminder that the money for the Tourism Commission isn't coming from city taxpayers. It's coming from people who come and stay at our hotels. So no, just yeah, so we're clear. Time, time Paul's time, time is on the text. Paul's time is on the text. Okay, well, all of those things need to be considered from the budget. Right. Paul Roman Hammond. And then Paul Roman Depending on what woman's question is. <laughs> I don't mean to your superior questions. Well, but, um, first off, from a marketing standpoint, I really love this. Obviously, you Thank put you. a lot of time and Thank effort you. and thought into it. Um, I love the cohesive um, look and feel and um, and to address Alder Woman Wilhelm's thought. I like Franklin Park. And maybe it's time the Parks Commission looks at renaming some of our existing parks that are Franklin Park because we have a lot of really great people who could maybe use a park named after them, but that's for the Parks Commission to look at. Um, it, some of these possible partnership activities really go a long way towards a lot of things that I had visions for to be happening in this community, to build our community, to improve our communications, to be more cohesive in what we're doing you know, through our parks and our department and um, partnerships with the schools. I think the possibilities are endless. Um, so that being said, just a couple quick questions on the budget because my understanding is as part of the $150,000, the staff person does is a part of that, but you have $35,000 for staffing in the budget. So if you could just clarify that. So. I don't know how to. Can that's part of what's in process. So right? that's that, that's part of the discussions. Gotcha. We set aside thirty five thousand initially for this year to, to explore having a staff opportunity. Then this opportunity came up to us, and now there's some discussions being had on which way that's going to go. So we left that as a line okay. item just gotcha. in case we need it. Gotcha. And then if you could speak just a little bit more to um, the 
shared incentive structure. I think that's something that um, I'd like to know a little bit about and yep. I think would be um, a little bit more of a, a selling point per se to the community. And I'd also preface that with, as you move forward with something like this, um, the communications into how it's being funded and, and what surrounds it with the statutes mm -hmm. and the like, um, how that's communicated to the community. Correct. Um, I think that's going to be a very, very important point. Um, but yeah, if you could talk a little bit about that shared incentive structure. The way, the way we, what intrigued us about the shared voice was that they already have a really large voice in the, in the community through special events, marketing, economic development. In addition, we would be adapting those assets as well with them. Um, in return, for example, special events. Our commission does partner with the Civic Celebration and um, used to. Used to. Um, but the, that would be adapted as well. So anything that we connect with our commission in terms of marketing, um, community focus, would also be adapted with, it's an addition to. So my thought, is, what our thought is, the assets that we're gonna gain by theirs is worth a lot more than what we're just doing. If you can see it on the paper, so. And maybe I didn't ask the question correctly. So with some of these possible partnership activities, what I'm getting at in, in thinking that that's what the shared incentive means is say example, we have the FPD versus um, the firefighter softball game any revenues made from that, are those equally split then between Rock Ventures and the Tourism Commission? Yes, correct. So they w we would split those yield until we make up, so the naming rights initially were supposed to cost $250,000, correct? Okay. And the Tourism Commission is dis in discussion with them to spend $150,000. To make up some of that $100,000 gap, this was the incentive structure that we were talking. So if we would do an event like that, we would split them 50-50, and then after that, we would split them 70, 30. So okay. the Tourism Commission would have an additional stream of revenue aside from just the room tax. So ultimately you want to be very self-sustaining. Yes, absolutely, yes. 100%. We want to get beyond just using room tax. We are also you know, thinking about ways that we can utilize this website that we've now built. We want to you know, be able to kind of do some of the, get some revenue from, from that as well. So you know, those types of things are, are what we're looking at to get the commission additional funds besides the room tax. I think no. I think I think it's good. I'm good unless okay. you guys want to ask me. Um, just one uh, a legal concern, and, and uh, Mr. Mayor, we might want to refer this to City Council. Signing a contract are, is the City of Franklin a guarantor in case they don't have the funds to pay for this on an annual basis? Are the taxpayers then going to be responsible? No, we'll just make sure they're not. That, that would be a nice... Uh, yes, correct. No, that was on yeah. the list of issues. Yep. That, that, was on, that was probably towards the top of the list of issues. Yeah. Well, just so I know, okay, you're going to work with City Council to make sure that uh, we work that out. Yes, and we're going to work with independent council as well because time is money, oh. as everyone keeps reminding me. Yeah. <laughs> Which, brings, well, we'll up another issue. Which brings up another issue, and, and Mr. Zimmerman didn't talk about it, he talked about it briefly in this presentation, but if the baseball season cranks up, we don't want a blank signs facing the road, and we don't want a blank sign now. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't like a blank sign now. So. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any other questions for the commission? I think this may have been covered at a previous town council meeting where there were so issues okay. with, re I dare say there are written communications with you, Mr. City Engineer, with regard to what, how the bidding process
in front of the common council. Uh, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was yes. no issue with the sign. Okay. Yes. That's good. There was no issue. Scouts for Troop 531, and I am the Senior Patrol Leader, or the Youth Leader of uh, Troop 531. I also served as the Assistant Senior Patrol Leader, a Patrol Leader, and an Assistant Patrol Leader, um, and then this has included all my 10 years in scouting, uh, all the way through Cub Scouts in Kindergarten, and I'm looking forward to continuing on, on my scouting journey. And your Oh, uh, 6800 South 20th Street. My project is going to be a tribute for uh, police officers, firefighters, or first responders. Um, basically, the gist of it is it's going to be a granite memorial. They'll be sitting upon a granite foundation. Uh, the granite foundation is going to be four feet by two feet by three feet. The concrete foundation is going to be five feet by three feet by one and a half feet. There's going to be engravings etched into either side of the rectangular tribute. Um, with the exact verbiage that is yet to be determined. However, uh, I've come up with to those who give the ultimate sacrifice for our safety. And this is going to be in one and a half inch legible font that should be visible 15 feet uh, from the sides where the font is written. On top of the tributes, there will be two stone statues representing the saints for both police officers and firefighters. St. Michael represents police officers and St. Florian the firefighters. Um, and then when this is completed, it will be surrounded by a circular pattern of mulch as, long, as well as a weed barrier. And then uh, this is the digital rendering of my said project. And then this brings me on to the location. So this is going to be placed on the Franklin Public Library uh, adjacent to the other memorials. Uh, respectfully, this is going to be keeping distance from the other memorials and not deterring from them. Uh, as well as giving it its own personal acknowledgement. Uh, this is going to be on the left side uh, in the open grassy space. And this will have to be dug out and filled out with uh, four feet of traffic bonds, originally changed from uh, four inches of traffic bonds to go below the frost line. Uh, and then the concrete will be added. And then this will be able to withstand the weather and conditions and won't have to be tended to once it's finished. And then these are a few of the site pictures um, that I have all right and then this brings me on to my costs so um, I'm just going to go over a couple of the major costs that I have here uh, first off would be the granite uh, that Wisconsin granite by design will be providing uh, the quote that I got was for black pearl polished this was roughly three thousand dollars or $3,068.48, and this would include all 44 square feet of granite, and the company would come in and miter it and assemble it on site. Then uh, I was looking at Hazi and Son for my concrete. Uh, I would need a footing mix, and this would be $342.14, um, and uh, this was kind of the final uh, mix that I was looking at, so uh, it, even if I needed a little bit more, uh, I put $400 as the price, uh, just in case I needed a little bit of wiggle room. For the statues, both of them would be estimated between $150 and $200. This is obviously depending on the availability during my buy time. Um, and I was looking at gardening statues, but that is um, still yet to be determined. There are other possible options that I could be looking at as well. Or if I'm using a gardening statue, I would need a seal for weather conditions to make sure that those um, withstand time. Um, there's going to be wooden frames that I'm going to need to make for the concrete, um, plus some additional wood that would also need to go inside of the granite box. Uh, I need to build an A-frame to make sure that the granite, even though it's mired, mitered, 
it needs to have additional reinforcement inside of the box, so this would um, be included in the frame, so this is roughly $150. And then um, just mulch for uh, the surrounding area, around two cubic feet, uh, and then this was when I converted it, so it's about $20. Um, next, I would need concrete adhesive. Um, this would be to hold the statues in place and then uh, holding the granite in place after the company comes in and buys it. Just extra protection for that. Um, the statues will most likely be bolted in, but uh, just for extra protection, they will be uh, adhesively applied. Um, I'm gonna need nails for the frames. Um, nothing too big there. Uh, there's gonna be traffic bonds. Uh, rather than this being three inches deep, it's going to be four feet deep. Um, this will have to go below the freezing points and um, that should hopefully help with uh, withstanding weather conditions and um, everything in that area. Uh, the engraving and sandblasting will be done by Wenton Monuments. Uh, I was looking at one and a half inch lettering and the price variation here is between 400 and 800 because I was going back and forth on um, putting my Eagle Scout plaque, whether not getting a plaque or just engraving it into the monument. And um, I also talked with the library board and the concern they had was actually that the statues had too much of a secular meaning. So if I were to remove the statues, I could just put an engraving of the police and fire logos on um, opposite sides as well. So that's why there's a differential price for that. Who raised that issue? Uh, the library board. And then other miscellaneous costs, just food and water for the workers, um, and gloves, masks, stuff like that, $100. And then the overall cost was around $4,952.62. So there's been some fundraising things that I've actually started on um, since I've gotten approval from BSA to uh, continue on with my fundraising. I've created a fundraising letter, and I've created a poster that I'm hoping uh, that I can spread throughout the community and the letter I'd be sending to any potential uh, people that would be interested in donating, uh, family, friends, large companies, corporations that I'm working with. Um, I'm, I'm gonna make it open-ended so that people, uh, so that it can go to basically anyone. Additionally, I'll be using a GoFundMe page which will be linked up to a Facebook account that'll be having weekly updates um, and in doing this, making sure that people are, or that the social media aspect of this is covered since most people are on social media now because of the current pandemic. Um, if the pandemic does let up, however, I was thinking of doing food selling events, most likely, most likely a brat fry, uh, which is where I just uh, hopefully can get a discount by, from Clements and then sell uh, brats, and uh, that's one of the main focal points for fundraising. Additionally, uh, I will be reaching out to all of my large companies and corporations. I've already gotten a discount on the granite. Um, I have to check in with the other companies on the other aspects such as concrete frames and um, lumber, stuff like that. And then um, I was thinking I could re reach out to the police chief and fire chief to seek assistance and maybe hold fundraising events um, uh, at their precincts and stuff like that. Um, and then obviously if I do end up fundraising too much money, this money is gonna go back to the beneficiary, which in this case is technically the mayor, but I'm hoping that I can donate it back to our first responders. Wait a minute, you reaching into my pocket? No. Getting into it. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Putting it Wait a minute. <laughs> All right, this brings me on to my working days. So I kind of broke down how, how long I think this is going to go. So I'm gonna be starting this hopefully by late August, I'm hoping that the fundraising will go rather quickly. Um, however, that could be pushed off and this could be starting early next spring. Um, anyways, um, I'm thinking that day one and day two are gonna be dedicated to digging out the area and building the frames for the traffic bonds and the concrete to be laid in. Um, day three will be putting in the four feet of traffic bond, making sure that all the frames are set. Uh, day four, pouring in the concrete, and then this would have to cure for roughly a week. Day five would be installation of granite, and this would be done by the company, uh, and I would be knocking out the frames, just checking, make sure, making sure that everything is um, well oiled and going on that. Uh, day six, making sure granite is attached using the adhesive, and then we'd be bolting on the statues. 
uh, making sure everything is set for when some monuments to come in. And then day seven, when some monuments would actually be coming in uh, on site, and I'd be there to monitor and facilitate and make sure everything is running smoothly. And then day eight um, is putting mulch up for now, um, still determining if I'm going to put a sign or just have one to uh, engrave uh, Eagle Scout Project in that. And then these are just some of the tools that I would need um, for my project. Uh, caulk gun, hammer, circular saw, shovels, gardening rakes, string level and three foot level, uh, wooden stakes, wheelbarrow, tamper, hand trowels, and then a tarp or a plastic cover. And then I included the cost of these into my overall cost and then most of these I own or could be donated from the companies we're working with. And then, <clears throat> so scheduling is obviously going to be something that's going to be a very large part of my project uh, since I'm working with three main large companies and I have to make sure that I'm catering to everybody's schedules. Um, I know that I'm going to have more labor intense days uh, that are going to be at the beginning of my project and this is where I'm going to have to have more of my scouts come in as volunteers rather than when the companies are doing most of the work themselves. And then the other bullet point is kind of related to my safety plan, which is disclosed on my next slide. Um, in my safety plan, it states that younger scouts and youth will not be allowed to handle heavy equipment and power tools and are not allowed to be in the same area as them when they're being operated. There's going to be a, a sign-in sheet disclosing who the person is, if they're a scout leader, uh, scout or none, and then their time in and out. Uh, also on that sign-in sheet, there's going to be a location to the nearest hospital. Um, on the site, there's going to be multiple first aid kits at all times. There's going to be hydration and food for everybody. The, uh, everybody will be required to wear closed-toed shoes. Um, there will be safety glasses and gloves when necessary. And then my father will also be on site most days, and he's medically trained. Um, and then these are some of the permits and permissions that I've had to go through so far. Um, right now, I've gotten approved by the library board, um, and I got the police and fire chiefs okay, and um, I'm checking in with, obviously, the common council right now and um, getting my other permissions and permits uh, as, as soon as I can. Um, and then in summary, uh, my Eagle Scout project is a way to give back to the community and provide them with something that will benefit them in the long run and then also show my leadership in completing the project. And I believe that I'm doing this in my project and it will give the community a place to reflect on the first responders, give their time fighting for the rights and lives of others in the community, and also a remembrance of those who pay the ultimate sacrifice for our lives. That's it. Regular, what do we got? What hoops do we have for him? Good evening, Ray Willow from the Planning Department. Do you hear me? Yep. Yes. Uh, yes, you will need to apply for minor cyclone amendments to the Planning Department. Um, please include the filing fees, $75. Okay. Okay, so question I have for the clerk. Is that qualify for a public grant? The um, application fee, there's also permit fees. Um, there is a, the city does have what's called a public grant and it stands for people uniting for the betterment of. Oh, <laughs> no, it's, it's city attorneys. I just, uh, I say it daily and I just don't know what I like. People united for the betterment of a, life in the community. Oh, there, nice. that's what it is. Um, and so I'll, I'll email it to you okay. and we can see how you fit into that and it may cover some of the um, actual city costs that, because your project um, is for the betterment of the community. Um, but I'll get in touch with you after I, I think we've emailed a couple times already. So yeah. that, that may cover his um, $75 fee and some of the other things that are going to be required. Is that it? Great. Yes, I, I will contact you. Uh, we have been sending emails back and forth. I will send you the application form and all the details. Okay. And Milwaukee County Director of Safety for the Parks and Waterford Police Officer, John Nelson. So, Noah. 
So thank you for what you're doing, okay? It's a huge task. So what I'd like to do is provide and pay for the statue for St. Michael, who is known as the patron of the lost cause. Patron saint of the lost cause, because it's a lost cause. So just um, when you email the clerk, my information will be on there as well, and we'll talk about it, but I will definitely cover that. Thank you so much. Um, Alder Mayor, did you have something to add to that? <laughs> yeah, we know what you're looking for. <laughs> <laughs> No, but I would like to say nice job. I had the privilege of working with your scout master, uh, Mr. Murphy, for many years ago, and I've gone through many of these. Did a very nice job, very, uh, very uh, thorough. Um, I would recommend, though, as you do this, I'll step over the, the Aldermanic district lines and go to Crossroads. Um, talk to Mike there. Mike really supports these kind of things at Crossroads Pizza in St. Martin's. Um, they got the best pizza in the world. And he's very supportive of these kind of things. So as you do your fundraising, um, I would recommend that you talk to Mike. But very nice job. So what is your connection? So my connection to this project is my dad is actually a Milwaukee police officer. Um, and I just always wanted to do, like, originally what I wanted my project to be is I kind of wanted to do, uh, I just wanted to give back to the service, right? And I didn't know how I really could do that, but... I was looking for projects and I saw other people who kind of made uh, memorials and I thought, well, I can't really make a memorial since we haven't really had many deaths um, in line of duty, in Franklin anyways. So I decided to make a tribute rather. Very good, and is your dad working now? Yes, he is. Well, thank him for us. Uh, these are very difficult times for everybody in the service. So Noah, you got a check coming to me. I'm not going to embarrass my family. Anybody else? The city attorney. I assume that this memorial on city property, property will be dedicated, given to the city. Yes. And I will take a look at what a standard to uh, approve the project. I'm so moved. Second. Uh, let the record reflect that it's a unanimous uh, motion and a unanimous second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any Aye. opposed? Motion carries unanimously. Go forth and dig a hole. Thank you. Four feet. No. <laughs> I told you that. Yeah. Too. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. to approve. Second. Second. Mr. City Attorney. And add to the uh, requested council action with the final document to be prepared by the City Attorney with minor technical changes. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Same amendment to the following for intergovernmental agreement for fire service for the DNC. So move to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Aye. Motion carries. G7, resolution conditionally approving a two lot certified survey map for Mills, Wyoming Hotel, Mr. City.
deviations from the Wisconsin statutes, the municipal code, uh, Wisconsin case law. I appreciate that you first received this today. Um, so obviously, uh, my my thought and recommendation would be um, discussion of this subject. your attention to page 109 and uh, the date stamp on it is um, March 16th with a revision of April 23rd and that's the same revision date on all of the um, uh, documents um, and then in the um, on page 120 the Milwaukee County letter for the review is dated April 3rd. So I understand there were a lot of changes since the Milwaukee County reviewed that. Um, and I understand what Milwaukee County's job is um, for that. But one of the things that changed that Milwaukee County did not see is the um, cul-de-sac radius. And one of their jobs is to make sure closures and um, uh, the uh, legal descriptions are correct. And um, I would feel more comfortable if the actual document that we were approving or holding off right now had a review by um, Milwaukee County uh, with the, the one that we're actually looking at versus an amended one that they did not get. So I did um, get a copy of what was sent to them, and I took the document that was in here, and I highlighted a few of the things that were not on the county document, I'll just hold it up. Granted, some of these changes are very good, they were asked by staff, but one of the issues I have is some of the ones that are on some of the other pages. So all, everything you see in yellow on here are all <coughs> things that are not on what the county reviewed. What page is that? That is um, oh, page 109. 109. Right. <coughs> and so then, <coughs> what happened when, between when it went to the county and later on, Monarch Drive, has a, a little curve of radius on an area D. Monarch Drive originally, that was sent to the county, did not have that. It was a continuation road into the development. One of the things it says in the resolution is the city engineer is supposed to um, 
he will do the full design and plans of the cul-de-sac will follow approval of the CSM. So I'm wondering if you have done the full approval of the cul-de-sac you have. Um, are you aware that the cul-de-sac length in the ordinance is maximum is 800 feet? That's true. This cul-de-sac, now that it became one, and it wasn't that when I went to the colony originally, goes, it's like 1,500 feet long. I, I wasn't aware we were going to that almost double the cul-de-sac length. And this is the same problem I had with um, Ever, the Evergreen Street, where we extended it really long and then we put a park at the end of it and it's way past ordinance length. Um, but regardless of that, another thing um, is on page 115 of the documents in our packet, the changes on this page um, include um, item number three is, um, says that the wetland delineation report was December 8, 2014. And uh, the Greg sent me the uh, wetland delineation report and I asked him to take a look at the date and um, he can confirm that that date is not matching up. Um, and also, it says lot five and lot six. Um, lot one and two are served by public water and sewer, so they're not quite served yet, but they will be served. And number six was the turnaround. Neither one of those are were on the county's review. So there, I'm totally in agreement with the motion to table this, but I just wanted to let you know that I felt that there were substantially enough changes to the CSM that if we didn't have what we had, that I wouldn't have voted for it based on the differences in the review dates and the revisions that didn't go to council, or that's common. Thank you. There are others too I didn't mention, but I just kind of keep it a little bit there. Oh, who knows? Well, Mr. Moore, did we get an answer on that cul-de-sac question? I know she. It was discussed at length at Planning Commission. Right. So does that mean it was approved to double the length that's normally by city ordinance? I don't recall if it was a, talked about as a condition, but it was discussed and we, at Planning Commission, we, we discussed that issue. We didn't deny it based on that. It wasn't a usable cul-de-sac. Fire access. Fine. Any comments? Let's see some on your own. All those in favor of motion to table signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. GA, your motion to table is uh, 16. So moved. Second. Got one in there, Mike. Good job. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G9.
affirmative for the action in the past. So he moved correctly. Is there a second? And it doesn't matter who uh, seconds. Is there a second to his motion? Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to reconsider the action of to deny. All those in favor of the motion should reconsider the action signify by saying aye. Well, I'm gonna one clear point of clarification on this motion, because this is where my, my question was from okay. before. So, Mr. City Attorney, we're looking to put these three back after everything's been reviewed again. Because my motion obviously is to deny this. Okay. So now we're going back to the 16th. We're moving forward to the 16th after we get everything reviewed. Right. Okay. Is this first act? Well, I just know how these things get legalized where I want to make sure that we're crystal clear here. Right, right. This first action will be to bring it back on the table. Okay? And this, in essence, what happened the last meeting didn't happen. So nothing happened. Right? And then the next action will be to table it to June 16th and refer it to staff to generate the appropriate documents for denial. Because that was what your action was. So them, so staff is to prepare the appropriate documents for denial. So that, no, no, yeah. no, you oh, yeah. See, no, because you're. I don't, want, I don't want to be floor. slick. we next thing. In. Wait, you already got a motion on the floor to reconsider. We got to vote on that, and nobody voted on it. So all right, I'll let Willow. Just to help out with that. Oh, so, not, no, no, so the next. The next time is when you insert the deny. Just keep it, like you said, what you want to do is write up the denial. So. Yep. Okay. I'm good with that. That's my motion. Mr. Studio Attorney. What staff will be prepared will be a draft. It's akin to a decision prepared mm -hmm. approving a natural resource special exception. Mm -hmm. It's either a staff recommendation, rec recommendation or a draft. No decision is made until it's reviewed and considered by the common council members. So, under reconsideration, the subject matter is open. Hypothetically, it returns in two weeks. You could have a move to approve the uh, decision with um, the exhibits that were within the um, May 19th Common Council meeting agenda packet. But I told you what staff would do with regard to further review and preparation and return that for the June 16th meeting. Motion on the floor to reconsider. All those in favor to reconsider. Signify by saying aye. 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 I vote aye. Put a little trust here. It's not that difficult. Mm. Alderman Barber, what's your vote? Staff for further review and preparation and further common council review and discussion and return of subject matter to June 16th. That I'll second. Alderman Nelson's motion, second by Alderman Dan. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Okay. G10, page 147 is a resolution authorized 
administrative officials to execute subdivision sub development. Sounds left. Alderman Barber? Yes. Thank you. Uh, with uh, Oaks Estate Subdivision, Alderman Mayor. Go to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G11 is a resolution uh, authorizing certain officials to accept the conservation easement as part of Oaks Estate Subdivision. Alderman Mayor. Go to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G13, resolution declaring the city of Franklin's official intent to reach the resolution. Too many. I have an additional page. Authorized auxiliary work for ATC and Terracon Consultants, eight for projects in tax incremental district number four. In the amount of up to ten thousand dollars. So actually, the uh, ATC has actually provided two proposals to us. Um, you see one in front of you. They provided one earlier that's for five thousand, with the understanding that. Uh, let me back up. So the situation is because of how they're having to dig the sewer, they are getting within too close for comfort to the really high power uh, uh, electric service lines. So we have to pay to de-energize those lines. And so the, they ask for money up front, and when all is said and done, they'll, they'll settle up with us. Um, two proposals, one proposal is for 5,000, and then with the understanding that that's not probably on the low side, they'll come back to us later and could ask for some additional monies. Or the proposal you have in front of you is for 8,000, and we think that's going to be on the high side, although it's not a guarantee, and the idea is that they would have a refund to us, so I guess, um, we have a check ready to go for five. So There's a re included in the voucher packet is a request to approve an eight thousand dollar disbursement. That's for ATC. For ATC, and so it, I just want to point that out because on the council action it shows ten thousand for ATC. So we're looking for eight thousand dollars for ATC. Um, the hope is that we would come back to you at the next meeting and say it came in less than that. And actually get a one or two thousand dollar rebate the other issue is the asbestos investigation so we were going to tear a house down um, talking with uh, some perspective of folks who do that it looks like the budget could be less than twenty five thousand so it would not require bidding but to do that I have to have the asbestos investigation to verify what needs to be done um, Terracon is already on the site doing investigate doing inspection work for us, and I'd like to have them um, authorize up to $10,000 to do that. That's on the high side. Um, they can't get an exact quote because if you look through some of the pictures, they're fully unsafe structures to enter, and the idea is that um, they would have to be there with the contractor as, they, as things are being torn down, then go through the, the rubble, um, so so forth. So what was our original bid amount for the tearing down of the structure? We had a $50,000 budget, and it appears that actually tearing the, the contractor's work to tear it down would be about 20, less than 25. And so then they're going to essentially blow up on that and they'll fall over. <laughs> okay, so we got, we got uh, 25,000 unspent in the budget. You're asking us for 10 grand for tearing down. Correct. So we're earmarking 10 grand. How are we well, I've never really understood why we took on this expense of the developer and then didn't do our due diligence for one, where the utility lines are, and two, that there could be asbestos there. I mean, I just helped my 28 year old daughter go through looking at a property, and we went through the same thing, and she backed out of the deal because of the cost. and. She's 28, she's thinking about these things. Why aren't we thinking about this thing a little bit up front? I, I just, it just seems the procedures don't seem to follow and then we end up spending more money. You know, that we should have known there's gonna be asbestos uh, uh, research that needs to be done. And we should have known where the utility easements were for 18C. 
I just wish we do a little bit more due diligence on this stuff so, before so we get ourselves wrapped up. In. So during the design, everything was passed through ATC. They did not anticipate that the contractor would be using as large of an excavator as what's needed to bury, to bury the deep pipe. In fact, when they go back through with the other utility lines, they will not be needed uh, to de-energize at those times. So it's the situation where nobody realized it till, till now. Yeah, and up to the fact that I hope we got a really good price on this piece of property for all the expenses we have to do, but it should have been someone else's expense, and not the city. Is your motion authorized options A and B? I'll move. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, say you're probably saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G13, page 193, the resolution declaring City of Franklin's official intent to reimburse an expenditure of proceeds of a borrowing or borrowings authorized by the city in 2020. Well, here's what I see. This is what I'm talking about, things not done orderly. You know, as someone who has a troubleshooting electronics degree, when I'm trying to follow something, and I go back and try to follow something, I, yes, we can do it with the suggestion of my motion, and, and that was my motion. I'll second so. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. Uh, G15 is report on expenditures for COVID. Move the place on file. Second. Any questions? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. G16, page 203, is authorizing the uh, city to execute a contract for professional services for roof pipe win. Move to approve with the stipulation that they continue to work toward working with the Environmental Commission, particularly when it comes to their deliverables, because it's really the same mission as the Environmental Commission is um, responsible for. Yep, and there was an article in the last one. Uh, I'm guessing this is retroactive because the deadline was December 15th, so that won't be a problem. Is it 2019 was the deadline? Well, we already signed. Is there a second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carried. G17, page 221, resolution authorized certain official execute engineering services agreement for a signal at Noel, uh, for Nolwood Legacy Apartments at Lover's Lane. All in there. Move to approve. fastest two minutes I think I've ever had. Uh, the Finance Committee spent a fair amount of time discussing uh, 
the revenue shortfalls that uh, finance has identified for the current year as well as expenditure increases. Um, this report merely provides where the city is at at the end of April. Um, the uh, finance department anticipates bringing forward a forecast for budget year 2021 at a committee of the whole meeting in July to help the uh, council provide some direction on where and how the council would prefer that the city begin to try and balance its budget for next year in that we anticipate having some revenue shortfalls and some expenditure increases which will put the city in an imbalanced situation. You're also aware, I think this is just to superintend on uh, Alderman Hanneman. 
state Supreme Court is also going to make a ruling sometime in August uh, in regards to purging uh, at names off of people that have moved. Maybe our clerk is current on all that, but that is also going to make a major mess of this whole uh, uh, activity. But I wanted to ask the council, I've spoken to the mayor already in regards to making sure that the finance committee can review the, uh, the budget that we're going to see in July, that we can see it in our, in our June meeting, so we can go through with uh, the finance director, but as well as uh, make, uh, you know, just give our critical eye and critical view because it has three aldermen on it, plus we've got uh, some civil uh, uh, members on the committee that are prior finance and CPAs. Uh, we just read, we'd like to have uh, that expertise also uh, offer any uh, ideas because this is going to be an extremely difficult budget for the upcoming year. Well, you're not going to have a proposed budget by then. I, don't know. <coughs> I know it's not going to be proposed, uh, but just to have uh, the critical eyes of, uh, of the finance committee look at it. Well, let's, let's put it in perspective because I don't want anybody jumping off the bridges and things. Last year, our, our budget deficit one rating was. Costs. It, I, I do need to work with the city clerk on elections, but it's uh, likely that we'll be asking the Common Council for a budget amendment to authorize some additional expenditures. There will obviously be some grant money coming from the, city, from the state to offset some of those costs, but not having gotten the details yet from the clerk, I don't know whether or not that state grant money will cover all of the costs that the city is going to have and it's likely that our elections cost in 2020 will be greater than what was anticipated when the 2020 budget was adopted um, last November. Anything else on the April financial report? to approve. So Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? We have, the, we have the new one in our boxes. Yes, it just came today. Okay. And just to show you, Victoria has been yelling at me to sign this for a month. I said, nope, I can't do it. I need the council to do it. So here we are. Thank you very much. Now I can get Victoria to quit yelling at me. Um, licenses. Which one? Alderman Nelson. I'm going to defer to all, I'm going to defer to Alderman Hanneman. She's going to. Alderman Hanneman. That's the committee member in training. So bear with me as I go through our um, licenses. Alderman Hanneman. Yes. 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 I can add to that. Yeah, it was um, um, 
multitude of things, but primarily is incomplete application, falsifying application, and those kinds of reasons. We can refer that to staff to review. And return at the next meeting. Right. Yes. Yes. If not, we'll bring that one. Right. Okay. Um, and also, such 
Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion carries. I one vouchers. Motion for the following city voucher from Henry Day. I won a uh, motion approving the following city budget of the 90 day of June 1st, 2020, $1,085,169.12 and the payroll date is May 22nd, 2020, in amount of $386,704.45 and payments to various fair elections in the amount of $417,810.95 plus city matching payments and estimated payroll date is June 5th. Estimated at 395,000 payments to various payroll deductions. <coughs> estimated at 285,000 plus city matching payments. And property tax disbursements for the end date of May 28th. In the amount of $6,175.59. And approval to release payments to miscellaneous vendors in the amount of $492,811.87. So look. Second. Second. <coughs> All those in favor of Alderman Mayor coughing into his mask. <laughs> Aye, roll call, please. Alderman Nelson. Aye. Alderman Barber. Aye. Alderman Hammond. Aye. Alderman Wilhelm. Aye. Alderman Mayor. Aye. Alderman Olson. Uh, Alderman Dandrian. Oh, hi. <laughs> wow. Motion carries. Six eyes, no no's, no absent, no abstentions. Motion carries. So moved. Second. All those in favor. Aye. 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 Aye